where as we continue living through life, it may not be a problem if you're 13 years old, about to be like my nephew here, but if you're, you know, 60 years old, 50 years old, 70 years old, and you have had all these war struggles for all these years without surrendering some of these stuff to God, man, you're going to be overwhelmed. That's going to be a lot of stuff for you to carry. So anyway, here's the thing. We are supposed to be guided by what? The Holy Spirit. Okay, and not, not what people tell you to do. Nobody here is Holy Ghost Junior. We're all like, you know, we're supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit. So the, whole, the, the, the body has the, the, the back and forth going on. As this is renewed, which is the mind, as the mind is renewed, you are going to be having inclinations that are going to be leading towards God's stuff because God is a spirit. Amen. Okay? But if you continue, let's say, you, you check out a dirty magazine or you go to strip club or you do drugs mm -hmm. or you do whatever, then you're doing things that are feeding the flesh. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, you know, uh, why did I accept to Jesus Christ if I'm going to have this struggle? Well, again, life is challenging. Life comes with conflicts. So if you want to have a life with things that are manageable, if you want to, you know, if you want to have situations where you're with a lifesaver in the middle of the deep blue sea, because life is tough. You know? So as you feed the flesh, you are going to make decisions based on your feelings. And we know that the feelings sometimes are deceitful. If you follow your feelings, mark my words, if you follow your feelings for the rest of your life, by the time you are going to be dead, mm -hmm. you are going to be a failure, a disaster. If you follow your feelings. You have a voice here that's telling you this is the path. This, The path of the world opens up wide, it's very attractive, very seductive, very feel good. But the feel good, what happens is it distances you further and further and further and further and further and further and further away from God. And the further away from God you are, evil to you is nothing. Sin to you is nothing. The more sin is in your life, the more, the less spirit you have. Adam and Eve said, you know, the devil is, is tempting Adam and Eve and said, hey, if you eat of, uh, of, the, of this fruit, you're going to die. All of a sudden, Eve goes and she eats. She gives it to Adam, he eats. Hey, we're still alive. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? We're still alive. They may have been alive in the body, mm -hmm. but immediately they were dead in the spirit. That's right. So that's why we had to be reconnected with God through the Spirit by accepting His Son, which was Plan B. Because Plan A was for us to live, you know, naked in a wrong garden. But it didn't work out that way. But, uh, you know, and now Plan B comes up and it's Jesus, the Redeemer, who all of a sudden, you know, sanctifies our body and whatnot. So, this is the, the, the way the battle goes back and forth as you feed your mind. Because the mind is the control center to your decisions. The mind is the control center to your life. The mind, where, 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 what you put in here, it's not the emotions, it's the mind. The mind is the control center. Whatever you put your mind, that's where you're going to go. If you feed it good stuff, you're going to leave. Uh, 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 if you feed it bad stuff, the path starts off real attractive, but then at the end it closes down. And all of a sudden you're over here in a mess. Here, you got to make tough decisions. Decisions that sometimes this wants to do but the mind says, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. So it's tough. And guess what? The challenges that you probably had when you were a teenager at 20 years old, whatever challenges they were, whatever they were at 20 years old, uh, 25, if you're 40-something if you're like me today, uh, I tell you what, the same challenges that were back then are still, are still here today. The same struggle, the same temptation is here today. The devil ain't going to... See, the devil already knows your weaknesses. Okay? And without Christ, we are like almost nothing. And the devil ain't that smart. I mean, actually, he doesn't even need to be. He just throws the same bait back at you. It's like you're a fish. All of a sudden, you know that squid is bad for you, but you like it so much. You keep biting on it. You keep biting on it. And then they, uh, let me throw a piece of shrimp over here. No, I don't like shrimp. Let me throw a, a, a piece of uh, fish head. Or let me throw a piece of mullet or any other bait that you use. A warm, no, 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 no. You're attracted to, to the squid. Guess what? For the rest of your life, that's going to be your weakness. But as you overcome and overcome and go from glory to glory to glory to glory, you're going to become not a sinless Christian, because we're all sinners. 
Romans 3.23 says, We all fall short of the glory of God. One of the things I hate the most is when people put a finger on me, but I thought you were Christian. Because somebody cut me off and I said, Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I am. And I struggle like you. What's your struggle, sir? What's your struggle, ma'am? Because I, I know you haven't reached you know, holy, uh, holiness yet. Because nobody here has. So when you start you know, throwing your little uh, fiery darts at me, like, you know, like you know, you're uh, holy, you're holy, you're holier than holy, but you're earthly no good, then you've got a problem. At the same token, you can't be so fleshly that you're so disconnected from the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. You can't be so fleshly that, you're, that your relationship with God is just a facade. It's just something superficial. It's not a relationship like I have with my brothers, with my dad, my mom, my son, you know, whatever, some of you are with my friends. You know, it's not a relationship. You know, I, one of the things I can't stand about religious people is that they, you know, they're the first ones that accuse you, but then they never point the finger at themselves. 20 years go down. They've been a Christian for 20 years. And they're the same Christians 20 years from now than they were 20 years ago. They can't even remember three Bible verses. But yet they're the first ones to, to accuse you of something. Mm -hmm. You know? So, religion is not what Jesus came down for. He came for you to be free from the spirit of religion. He came for you to have a relationship, a connection with Him. Because otherwise, you're just going to be somebody, you know, just going through the motions. And, and you're going to be pointing fingers at somebody, but without really gaining spiritual ground. And here's the illustration I can give you here. This is the process, right? It all starts off with salvation. Again, at the end of the Bible study, I'm going to, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you a chance to, you all to participate now, but we were saved by the blood of Jesus. That's why I have read here, salvation. Salvation means that Jesus is your Savior. You have purchased the ticket to heaven. My son accepted Jesus Christ at nine years old at Promise Keepers Conference. I accepted my son, Jesus Christ at nine years old at my church. Salvation means Jesus is your Savior. And if it's getting a little hot here, I'm sorry, folks. Okay, I'm not used to having to make people. But um, <laughs> that's good, though. It's all right. The next process is the struggle process. It's the toughest. Okay? Because it's called the sanctification process. Another word for sanctification is the transformation, transformation process. In the sanctification process, you all see this, sir? In the sanctification process, okay, is where we have the struggle. Because here, before you accepted Christ and you had no salvation, but remember, this is step one. So, Mr. or Mrs., if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, or you're not sure, don't gamble with your eternity. Amen. Sooner or later, judgment is going to come, not by me, but by God Almighty, and you're going to have to make a decision. Don't gamble with your eternity. At the end, I'm going to present the question. Anybody wants to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior? That's step one. Step two is the sanctification process where everything starts to happen. The transformation. Jesus does not want you to stay the same. I'm not the same man that I was five years ago. But I still struggle with the same weakness that I still had five years ago. Some of you know what that is already, especially my family. And, but the thing about it is, the last part is where it really gets good. Which we're never going to accomplish, which is called holiness. Okay? 